Hello and welcome to our Year with the Ears, our daily vlog where we relive our year living in the Walt Disney World Resorts in 2019. Today is day four. This morning we got up early because this is our very first day that we are changing rooms and having our luggage transferred. We weren't sure how this was gonna go because we had actually never done it before anyway and we had a little more luggage than most couples do when they go to Walt yeah, Disney Yeah, you could, you could say a little more. Yeah, we had, we had quite a bit more luggage than most people do. At least I hope so. If you're bringing that many suitcases for a week trip, you, you might have, you might need to just learn to pack a little lighter. But we didn't send it all with Bell Services. Mm -hmm. We only sent the larger suitcases with Bell Services because it was easier to throw the small bags mm -hmm. in the car and we also wanted to keep like our computers and cameras, things like that with us. So we gave them our six large suitcases mm -hmm. and had them transfer those over and we just took everything else in the car with us and headed over to Port Orleans Riverside. Now, I had been to this resort one time. I don't remember much about it, but we had never stayed here. So this was really interesting. So we did online check-in and we're just kind of hanging out. We answered some emails, did a little work, and then decided to explore. And I was so surprised at just how pretty this resort is. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. It was a beautiful day anyway, so we were oh, going yeah. for a walk and we we're walking along the water and there are fountains and flowers. It was gorgeous. So we just had a lot of fun taking pictures. And the only time we'd ever been there before, we went over to like the Alligator Bayou mm -hmm. section. We never even knew about the mansions over there, like the Magnolia Bend area. So pretty over there. So we were kind of just having fun goofing off and taking pictures of flowers and the fountains. And we were being tourists. We were, we were acting like tourists, yes, <laughs> which is okay. I mean, hey, it's a tourist location, right? So we had a lot of fun doing that, but eventually we thought, you know, we probably should go see if our room's ready yet because it's been like, you know, three hours and it's almost four o'clock. Maybe we just haven't gotten the text message. I don't know what's going on. So we went back to the main lobby and I got in line to try and figure out what's going on with our room and see if maybe we can get in one like now because we'd really like to get in a room and get our luggage in and all that. So while he was doing the boring adult stuff, I decided to go exploring again because that's just what I do. And all around the lobby area, there were wreaths hung that the cast members had made themselves. So they each got to decorate wreaths and they were really well done. There were a mm -hmm. lot of details in some of these. They were a lot of fun. And I actually ended up making a friend. And I don't know if he'll ever see this video, but if you do, here is your picture that you asked me to take. So while I was taking pictures of the wreaths, this guest came up and said, did you get my good side? I'm like, you weren't in my picture. He goes, well, can I be? So I took a picture of him. So I have this picture of this guest and I hope someday you see this video so that you can see your picture because he never even asked to see it. He walked away and that was that. And mm. I made a new friend. <laughs> and all the while I'm standing in line, like she said, doing the boring adult <laughs> stuff, which by the way, I'm just gonna say like in parentheses here, I feel like that's a lot of the year. Alyssa's having fun and Robert's doing the boring adult stuff. I'm like, how did that work out? I don't understand, but I mean, I'm I guess- a lot of fun, you're no fun at all. That's exactly what it is. Wait, that's not a Disney reference. We can't use that one. Oh wait, it is now. Disney owns Ice Disney Age. Disney owns all. Disney owns Ice Age, so we can use that reference. Now. It's okay, <laughs> we're all good, it's all right. So anyway, we get up to the desk, and, or I get up to the desk and mm -hmm. ask them like, hey, what's going on with the room? Like, oh, we sent you a text message a while ago. Like, did you not get it? No, no, I didn't mm -hmm. get it. And that was the very first time that we had trouble with online check-in and getting a text that our room was ready. That was not going to be the last time that we had trouble with that. We will mm -hmm. kind of have just kind of off and on trouble with that throughout the year. We basically decided after the second or third time, we would just go to the desk every single time because with all the reservations that we had, for some reason, most normal people don't have that many reservations. I don't know why. So it was messing up the system. They couldn't like keep it all straight. So we just decided to do the hard thing and check in at the front desk every time instead of doing the whole mobile check-in thing. But the good news was our room was ready. And we were very excited about this room because honestly, before we started researching our year and kind of mapping out all the different room types we needed to try to get, we didn't know this room existed. Mm -mm. So when we got there to get in the room, it was just kind of like, all right, we're super pumped about it. At the front desk, they gave us a little scroll, like a little letter with a ribbon around it from Tiana inviting us to the Royal Guest Rooms. Now there are four different views for the Royal Guest Rooms. Mm -hmm. This one was a standard view, which typically means you're gonna be facing a parking lot. For us, driving a car that had a lot of luggage in it we wanted to take in, that actually worked out really well because our room was right there next to parking. It was perfect. It was actually really nice. So we walked up to the room and like you said, we were not prepared for what was gonna happen in this room not at all. because it was insane. The details in the Royal Guest Rooms are unlike anything else on Walt Disney property. 
It was amazing. The closest thing that comes to it would be the Art of Animation Suites. Those are really detailed, yeah. but I still feel like the Imagineers went one step up on these because we loved them. The faucet is Aladdin's lamp. There are details all over the room, like the magic carpet from Aladdin in the actual carpet. It's not a rug laying down. It is actually printed in the carpet. It's pretty cool. They also have Sultan from Beauty and the Beast, the mm -hmm. dog who is the footstool. That was my he favorite. He is there in the room, like the footstool is him. It's mm -hmm. really cool. There's of course border all around the room with different characters and things on there. There's different nods to different characters all around the room in the artwork. There are photos on the wall, or I shouldn't say photos, I should say silhouettes on mm -hmm. the wall of the princes because this is the royal guest room. So there's all the different princes on the wall, which I guess when you think about Tiana having this room and having all these other princes on the wall, that's kind of weird. But anyway, so there's all these silhouettes of the different princes, and this is the place. This is, is the only place that I have been able to find. And I've done some research into this to try to find it, but it's the only place I've been able to find that is official Disney that tells us that the beast has a name and his name is Adam. Now it's kind of widely known that his name is Adam because of some stuff that came out a few years ago, but that wasn't official Disney stuff that came out. This is an official mm -hmm. silhouette of the beast as a prince and it says Prince Adam. So I think we can confirm that his name yeah. actually is Adam. And by the way, I just want to throw it out there. How bad did <laughs> the prince from Snow White get shorted that his name is just the prince. They didn't even name him. I like, mean, it's not even like for the writing like they the wrote prince. a name. No, the prince. That's his name. I don't think they could agree on a name. I think that's what it is. Um, they couldn't agree on one, and by the time the movie came out, they never even used the name in the movie. That's possible. And he has always been the prince ever since. And he's also only had like a line and a half in the movie, I think. So that's probably I still think he part got of the reason. So yeah, he, he definitely got the short end. Everyone deserves a name. Anyway, we are totally sidetracked from the room, but it had those really cool silhouettes in there, and it also had one more feature that we were super amazed by because we literally spent like 30, 45 minutes looking mm -hmm. around the room at all the details. It was incredible. And somehow we missed one of the biggest details in the room until right at the very end. So I was actually standing next to the headboard and I was like, what is this button? That seems like a really odd place to have one. Mm -hmm. And then I started looking at the headboard and it looked like someone had taken a pin and just stabbed all over the headboard. I was like, well, that's not very nice. And I thought, wait a second, there's a button and holes. So I pressed the button and Robert goes, oh my goodness. I was like, what, what, I can't see it. Cause I was standing next to the headboard and I come around and this is the cherry on top because this is where we found out that the headboard actually creates fireworks. Like fireworks in the, the headboard. Thing. I don't understand how that is not more common in the Walt Disney World resorts. Cause that is the coolest thing. It didn't play music, which is probably a good thing. Cause that would be really annoying if you had kids that were pushing the button all the time. All night but, long. It was really cool to have the fireworks lighting up. We sat there and just like pressed the different buttons <laughs> on each headboard over and over. Good news, there were two headboards, so we yep. each had one we could we, press we and had, we just kept doing we it. We had a lot of fun with that. It was it was probably more fun than it should have been, but it was really cool because I've never seen anything quite like that. It was awesome. Also, can we talk about the fact that we're still so excited about this? Like this is what Disney does to you. It takes grown adults who are staying in a princess room, truly a princess room, that is supposed to be for children and turns the grown adults into children. Supposed to be for <laughs> children. Okay. Do children pay the bill to stay in the room? No, the parents pay the bill to stay in the room. It's for the parents. It's not for the children. But really, we just use the children as an excuse to get what we want. Okay, that's fair. But really, this is what Disney does to us. We loved, loved this room so much. So we had so much fun just checking all the little details out and I still Loved that room. To commemorate how impressed I was with all the details in the room here in the princess room, I decided to take a picture, which was one of the worst pictures I've ever taken of myself. So you're getting a very, very fast snippet of it right here. You'll also learn that I'm actually really bad at surprise faces because you'll see that throughout many, many photo pass pictures through the years mm -hmm. because that seems to be their go to for many things. And I never look surprised. Yeah, they're like, look surprised. And it's like, like. <laughs> I don't do surprised well. Yeah. She does real surprised well, just not fake surprised. So after all of that fun exploring the room and exploring the resort, we had worked up quite the appetite and we had reservations at Animal Kingdom. Mm -hmm. So we headed over towards Animal Kingdom and we were going to go to Pizza Safari. Yes, that Pizza Safari, the quick service restaurant. We had reservations there because at the time they had a family style sit down meal that was only $20 a person. 
and we were gonna go try it out because we yeah. never tried it and we're kind of hoping like it'd be pretty good but even still family style all you can eat like I'm on, I'm on board for that for 20 bucks like that sounds awesome mm -hmm. so we go over there and it is a lot of food they bring out salads they bring out some caprese they bring out three different pastas two different two pastas two different pastas two yeah. different pastas they bring out pizza then they bring out dessert and it's cannolis. You're like, where am I supposed to put they this? They just keep bringing food to the table and it's not like it <laughs> takes very long to make. Mm -hmm. So basically, as soon as you sit down, there's food in front of you. And as soon as you start eating the appetizer, the more food comes out. And then you start eating the pasta and the pizza comes out. It just, it keeps coming. And we're like, I need a bigger table because I have too much food. And non-alcoholic drinks were included too. Mm -hmm. So all of that for $20 at Disney. That was one of the cheapest sit-down meals we probably had oh, at Walt Disney World. Yeah, it most I'm definitely sure. is because 20 bucks is just unheard of. For and table our service. server was amazing. I think there were two other families in the restaurant. The other tables had kids. We were the only ones there without children. Mm -hmm. And so we were just taking pictures. Our waitress was the sweetest, loved her. And so we just had a really good time. And we were so full. We were not prepared for how full we were gonna be at the end of that. But I mean, the pasta was so good. We each decided that we liked one. So it kind of worked out because one bowl was mine, one yeah, bowl was We his. didn't even use the plates. They give you the plates <laughs> to like put the pot. No, we just took the bowl for ourselves and just it worked that way. That's fine. It was great. So after we rolled ourselves out of there, we got to the front of the park and took a picture with the photo pass photographer in front of the Christmas tree. Yeah, they hadn't taken the tree down yet. It's kind of funny because they have the Christmas decorations and it's all a big deal in December, but they actually stick around a little bit in January for a few days or more, depending on where you're at. So it was kind of cool to get a picture in front of the tree, even though we weren't actually there for Christmas and hadn't been to Animal Kingdom at all since we'd gotten down there. And that was the end of our night there in Animal Kingdom. So we'll see you tomorrow. For our year with the ears.